So today I'm going to share my story. I hope it's not too confusing. If you've never, you know, come from a conservative church and had to leave that, this is going to be confusing for you. Um, but it might also help you understand maybe somebody who has gone through this that you know. So I'm just going to dive in and just, I'm, I'm not a scripted person, so <laughs> just bear with me. You know, I grew up in in the Holdeman Mennonite Church. Um, and I just want to clarify, I love the Holdeman Mennonite Church and I love the people there. I did not leave because I did not like it. Um, I think that's very hard for some people to understand, but I could never have done that. I could never have done that to my family, knowing what they believe um, and how that would hurt them. I could never have done that to my family because to have you, your family believe that you're going to hell, that you're, you know, making the worst decision of your life. I couldn't put them through that because that's very painful to, to think of your family member like that. Also really painful for me. Like I, you know, I, I could equate it to saying it would be less painful to have my family die than to have them think of me in that way. Right? Because when people love you, but they don't know who you are, right? They think they know who you are, but they don't, and they refuse to acknowledge who you are. That can be really painful. And, you know, for me, Christianity, my personal faith, my walk with God is the number one. You know, that's my identity. That's my number one priority, the most important thing in my life. So for them not to recognize that and to see me as somebody else, you know, I, I couldn't bear that thought, you know? But the thing is, is that I was dealing with it in a sense already before because I wasn't Mennonite. I wasn't a Holdem in Mennonite. I didn't believe what they taught. I never did. That was the other thing. Like my whole life, I never, I never believed their doctrines. Uh, and I didn't realize, you know, I was baptized young. Most of the most of the members are baptized young, you know, 13, 14. I didn't know what the doctrines were, um, you know, at least not clearly. I might have had a vague idea of a lot of them, but I was also 13. I wasn't really old enough at that point to have questioned anything. You know, you believe what you're what you've been taught, what you've grown up with, what the people you love and respect um, believe and, and live out. So I hadn't really gotten to the point where I was questioning, you know, whether God exists and, you know, all those fundamental questions that we as humans have uh, at some point in our life. I hadn't got to that point yet. Um, I just knew that I wanted to serve God. I, I love God. I wanted to be a Christian. Um, and I, I saw baptism as a step of that. You know, that's what I had seen and grown up with. So I, I just thought that was a step of it, right? But I didn't realize going into that... We actually, you know, the Holdemans actually have to verbally affirm that they are united with the doctrines of the church in order to partake of communion and things like that. So, so you actually, you, can, you can't just, you know, not believe and keep silent about it because eventually it's going to lead to you being dishonest um, in, in the way that it's set up. So that was essentially why I had to leave because... God at, at a certain point, um, when I was 27, um, 28 now, so it's still very fresh. It's less than a year. Uh, actually, <laughs> to be honest, they have not expelled me yet. Um, you know, they, I guess, had, don't have a clear reason to expel me yet, which I don't really understand, but, um, it will happen at some point. I'm not sure exactly when, but it will happen probably soon. Probably within within a year for sure. Within a few months, I'm guessing. But, yeah, so that's the other thing. Like, I don't get to choose. Like, I can't withdraw my membership, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit confusing. But the only way you can withdraw your membership, you know, I mean, you can't. The only way it is withdrawn is if they believe that you are no longer a Christian, that you're no longer saved, you're no lo longer serving God. Um, and 
I know that that will happen. Uh, the only other option would for would be for my um, membership to be annulled. But because I've been, I was a member for so many years, from like 13 to till now, um, because I was a member for so many years, I don't think they would annul it at this point. Even though I think that's what they should do, right? Because like I, like I said, I, I didn't know what all the doctrines were and I didn't realize that I would have to verbally affirm them. I would have to like, you know, I didn't realize that's a crucial part. And they have a big book of... <laughs> Of doctrines like I think it's oh I have the book here uh, I think it's like 30 30 some doctrines like around 30 um, that are very detailed and very very specific and it's just so interesting to me because I feel like I know I believe that the doctrine book has taken precedence in a sense, it's taken precedence over the Bible because we don't have to we don't have to believe the Bible, but we have to believe no, we don't have to affirm the Bible, we have to affirm the church's doctrines. And they basically see the church as extension of God, and so the church has essentially the same authority as God um, over our lives and over determining whether or not we're saved, whether or not we're going to hell or heaven. And that's where it's, you know, I understand why they believe that. You know, there's specific scriptures that they use to back that up. But again, it's taken out of context. So, I'm just going to, I just had to pause that for a second. It was running low on battery. So, I was never comfortable in the church. And a lot of it, there's a lot that goes into play into that. And I'm not going to go into it, but... Funny thing, <laughs> when I was a young child, the first prayer that I remember praying uh, was asking God for wisdom and understanding. Um, I don't know why he placed that on my heart, but that was something I really wanted. I always wanted to know and understand things. And something that I understood from a young age was that the the power that the church had and the power that the men had just was something that was I was never comfortable with. Not only that, but I wasn't comfortable with the level of um, life, like living faith or Christian life. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, I should know. I should know how to explain it better, shouldn't I? Uh, but I wanted fellowship with believers who were passionate about being Christians. I wanted fellowship with believers who wanted to go out there and save souls and wanted to serve society and wanted to make a difference. And I found the the Holdeman Church to be very, very cent centric, very um, closed minded, I guess, you know, they, you know, the doctrines state that if you know of the church, you're familiar with it, um, then you can't not join it or not be part of it and still be saved, still be going to heaven. Um, and yet I saw people who, I saw people who knew, you know, who knew the church, who knew about it, and yet were on the outside living Christian lives and making a difference in the world. You know, so there was so many things that just didn't line up. Um, I saw people, you know, being healed. I saw people, you know, having that living faith and that fellowship. And I had Christian friends, you know. I traveled. I had Christian friends uh, on the outside who who were passionate about their faith and who were, you know, reaching out and being like, do you want to do a Bible study with me? Uh, reaching out and saying, how is your Christian life going? You know, there were people that were actively you know, fellowship with me as a Christian, but who weren't Haldemans. And I don't know why that happened. Um, it just did. Maybe it was because I was always outgoing and friendly and, and I traveled and I knew people. But yeah, it's just, it, it was just, I was never comfortable there. I was never comfortable with, with the level of, of enthusiasm for, for Christianity. And I was never comfortable with the level of control that people had you know 
you know, when you, when an organization has control over so many aspects of your life to who you can marry, um, that guys can't even directly propose to a girl, like it has to go through, through staff members, you know, and it didn't seem strange to me at the time because that was just normal. But like, looking back now, I think I look at stuff like that. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, you know, it's understandable that you would want the opinions of your family and friends, but for, you know, leaders in the church to be able to stop a proposal, you know, that just seemed, that just seems kind of strange. You know, they can control how much education you get, right? Like if I wanted to become a nurse, that would be something that would need to be approved by staff members um, because that's higher education and they don't encourage higher education, which kind of a red flag. <laughs> I understand why they don't. Again, I understand why they don't. And they're, they have a valid, valid um, perspective, which is the stuff that's taught in the education systems is progressively getting worse. Um, so that's a valid point. But you know, as an adult, I feel like we should be strong enough Christians to be able to deal with that. Um, yeah. The problem is, is that so many Holdemans are so sheltered and have so many decisions, spiritual uh, decisions made for them that when they leave, they lose it and they, they don't have that, that base, um, you know, or they leave because they become offended or bitter because they're not treated right. And, and so they fall away from really what, how God intended them to live. And, you know, I don't claim to be living perfect. I've never claimed that. Like, I I will never be perfect. But but my faith and my relationship with God is always going to be the most important thing to me. Um, yeah. And so I think that's made a difference for me that I haven't, you know, gone down that path of, oh, I can do whatever I want <laughs> because I'm not a hold in, you know. But it is sad. Um... However, there are also a lot of success stories of people who have left and I think a lot of times they're just not talked about. You hear about the negative stories and you don't hear about the good ones when you're when you're in the Holdeman circle. But what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, they um the church kind of controls what you wear um you know everything to you know, they have influence over what kind of vehicles you drive, um, what kind of, oh, my boyfriend is trying to call. Yes, I'm dating. <laughs> I will maybe introduce you to him sometime, but he's very wonderful and very godly, maybe more than me, <laughs> not sure. But yeah, so leaving, leaving the Haldeman church was basically when God convicted me that I needed to be more honest. I needed to not hide what I believed anymore. And what happened was that I, t I've taken, I took communion with the Haldeman church several times and I would, you know, convince myself it was okay to say I was united with the doctrines, you know, that I believed, you know, men have to wear beards. <laughs> that's, that's one doctrine, right? Um, you know, that I believe that Christians have to be pacifists. That's what they believe. You can't, um, you can't harm somebody intentionally, um, no matter what. That's just like, no, you can't. Um, and I didn't know what I believed about that, you know, and there's so many things that I just wasn't sure about. I never believed, you know, they believe they're God's church, uh, the only church of God. On, on earth and I never believed that a denomination or an organization was God's church I believed it was people who were who were saved who were living for God um, and that's what the Bible points out in in my mind you know that's how I always you know read when I read it that's that's always what I heard and so I had taken communion with them several times and I found some excuse for for saying I was united with their doctrines like I would be like you know if my brothers or my dad say it then if I say it I'm just being submissive <laughs> like I know that sounds silly now but like I found ways around it or I just be like god I don't know like I don't know 
you know, I, I just, I'm just going to give it to you. And then I would say I was united with the doctors, but I knew I wasn't, you know, and finally, you know, I, I did, I did that one time and, and I just, I lost my peace. You know, I didn't have, I felt like I didn't, I wasn't connected with the Holy Spirit anymore. And I felt, I felt like I'd lost, lost my peace and my joy and, and, you know, my guidance from the Holy Spirit. And one day I just asked God, I was like, what happened? Like, where are you? Like, why, why am I feeling this way? And, and he just clearly told me, he said, you weren't being honest. You, you haven't been honest and, and you know better. You know, you know, I know how important honesty is. Like, <laughs> as a Christian, honesty is one of the basic principles that we should know um, in the Bible. We know God hates lies. We know that he's the father of truth and the devil is the father of lies. And, um, he just really, really convicted me on that. And I knew I could never, ever lie about what I believed again. Um, and that's why I had to leave because I do want to still take, take communion. You know, I do still want to, you know, be part of a functioning church and actually be part of it, you know, being able to fellowship, not having to hide what I believe not having to, you know, hide my questions or get in trouble for my questions. That was the other thing. Like I, I tried to make it work. I tried to talk to, to staff members and to various people. And I would ask them my questions. I'd be like, why, you know, why do you believe this or believe that? And, and then if I would point out why I didn't believe it using scripture, of course, um, I was met with, you know, you have a questioning spirit. Um, you're leaning on your own understanding or your own intellect or you're living by your emotions or you know there's so many so many um accusations or things that got thrown at me you know as possible explanations for why I was even you know asking these questions or thinking this way and I don't know why I don't know why it had to be me, you know, like, I often wonder why couldn't, why wouldn't my brothers have realized this and spoken up about it or, or, you know, some of the other men in, in, in my church growing up, why wouldn't they have seen the, the errors in, in the doctrines? And I know that so many people do and people who are in leadership positions in the church know, they know better and yet they... I guess some people think, well, it's going to get better, you know, it's going to evolve, it's going to whatever, but that's not an excuse to be dishonest and to hide what you believe, uh, at least not for me, <laughs> you know. Some people will say, well, you know, when we have to make that statement um, that we're united with the church, we don't have to specifically say the Holdeman Church, but everybody knows that that's the implication. Everybody knows we're referring to the Holdeman Church when we say that we're united with the doctrines, right? So it's complicated, I'm telling you. But I, in order to leave, in order to be obedient to God, I actually had to give up pretty much near everything in my life. Um, yeah, it's crazy to think about it, but you know, I gave up my job, I gave up my home only thing I think I still have is my car. No, there's, I mean, there's a few odds and ends, you know, I still have a few clothes and stuff, but remember, I was making my own dresses. <laughs> I was, you know, I, I had my hair in a head covering, you know, we weren't supposed to be wearing makeup. You know, we had to have our hair up all the time. I had to make our own dresses. So, you know, everything changed, right? Because I had to, and I'm still learning, like, <laughs> just today um you know I tried to press on nails for the first time because uh, I struggle with my nails I've gotten my nails done once I just can't justify spending the money on um to get my nails done um but like that's just like one example right but I had to buy all new clothes which still my wardrobe was still really small you know, I had to learn how to do makeup. I had to learn how to wear my hair, which I am still learning. Um, I, I often feel just like so 
unprepared compared to all the people around me, you know, all my fellow churchgoers, you know, that I volunteer with and go to church with, I often feel very inadequate. Um, I'm set so far behind because I didn't get an education. So even though I actually have two years of experience in, as a human resource manager, you know, for a small to mid-sized company, we had up to 40 people year-round who uh, were under me, right? Uh, I actually was more of a general manager. My title was HR manager, but I ended up being a general manager. So I oversaw like so many things. I helped in so many departments. I was the first full-time office staff, actually. Uh, so I kind of created my own position and did tons um, but because I don't have any degrees and certifications at that time, actually, I didn't even have a GED. Um, yeah, I hadn't even gone to high school. My parents sent me to grade nine and that was kind of what was the norm. Um, it's becoming more and more common for people to get, uh, to get their grade 12 education, which is good. But I did not. I started uh, working and traveling. So I have a lot of experience with that. <laughs> Lots of different jobs um, from the time I was, you know, 14 till 27, right? It's a few years. Spent a couple years in Kenya. Um, spent two years in Bow Island, Alberta, teaching special ed. Um, yeah, so I, I traveled. I think at this point I've been in 12 countries. So, you know, I've had lots of life experience, but not an education and so getting a job that actually pays me enough that actually pays me what I'm worth <laughs> is really really hard like it's it's almost impossible and I am way too stubborn to um, to accept not enough <laughs> like that's just something I'm pretty stuck on like I'm not right now actually I work like 50 plus hours a week sometimes um, because I, I want that income I need that income I want to be able to save up and buy a home and that's important to me so I'm also in school for the first university for the first time I got my GD and I got accepted into a university and I'm studying for um, a degree in business administration so but it's gonna take a long time guys <laughs> like it's gonna take a long time because I'm working. I'm, I have to provide for myself, support myself. So, yeah. It's it's so much, so much change. You know, I had to accept that my family was gonna view me very differently, my friends. The, here's a strange thing too, is that even though I'm pretty well-traveled for um, Holden and Mennonite, Almost all of my jobs, no, not, there's one job I had that wasn't involved with, with the church at all, but almost all the jobs I had in education, everything, was either with or for a Holderman Mennonite, right? So every time I traveled, I was either traveling with a Holderman or I was traveling to visit a Holderman. My whole circle was Holdermans, right? So... My education was private school, Holderman Church, so it's a little bit different. Um, my my whole friend group, most of my employers, co-workers, you know, everywhere I went, I was surrounded by Holdermans. So it's just a lot, like everything's different, everything's different. So, You know, I'd never been to a hairdresser, I'd never dated, I'd never... There's so many things that I had to learn, that I had to experience for the first time. We weren't allowed musical instruments, which is sad because I love singing and I have a decent voice, quote unquote, but we had a totally different amount. I actually have some right here. We had totally different... Can you see these notes on here? See how they're like all different shapes? So I learned to sing, I learned music, and I learned to sing in a totally different way than, than now. So I would love to, you know, help on the worship team at church, but I don't even know where to begin, you know? Like, it's just, it's so confusing to me. 
to sing with instruments and to sing not using notes and you know they don't even use papers and I don't really understand how they do it and <laughs> it's so confusing guys and that's something that's that that's that I've lost right and I don't know how long I don't know when I'll have the time to to you know relearn all of that and get that back I lost a lot and I just want to say it was so worth it like the reason that it was worth it is because I don't feel unsafe anymore you know I always felt a certain sense of un of being unsafe in in the Holderman church because I knew that me believing differently could cost me everything if I if I was honest about it and open about it, it could make me lose everything. It could make me hurt my family and it could it could make me lose my family in a certain sense and lose, you know, my my reputation completely ruined, you know? Like but all the people that I care whose opinions matter the most to me, my reputation is ruined. But it's so worth it because when you put God first and you are obedient to him, he un it unlocks a whole level of peace and faith and joy and just life, Christ it, li life that you, that you just can't experience otherwise unless you really, really put him first and you really are willing to sacrifice everything in life for him. You know, my... My income was cut in half, basically, um, by me leaving, um, which is partly why I have to work so terribly much, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's an aspect, but it's so worth it because, you know, now my life is so different. I'm, I'm more healthy, way more healthy than I was. My mental health is better. My relationships are better. Um, I have better friends, you know, I have better, you know, people to fellowship with. Um, you know, now I'm serving at church, I'm volunteering, you know, on a couple different teams at church and with my church group. We have small group, we meet every other week to just learn, learn more about Christian life. We've learned about um, prayer and fasting and just all, you know, things that I never, we never really, like when we had Bible study at, at the Holderman Church, it would usually only be in the winter for a few months. And like it was only like pre-approved books by, by the church. So they had their own, we had our own publisher. Uh, gospel publishers, which is the Holderman Church publisher, Christian literature, a lot of it's great, but again, it's it's kind of regulated by the church, right? So it has to agree with or align with their doctrines. So there's a lot of stuff we didn't really cover. Like, I didn't realize how how impactful and valuable fasting is. It's now something that I do um, every week. <laughs> So I, I love it, you know, but it's, it's just so fun to learn more about what it's like to be a Christian and how to be a Christian, how to be successful in Christian life and actually help people and reach out. Uh, I love that, you know, living in the city now I get to, I get to do outreach. You know, I'd never been to a gym before. <laughs> now I'm like in the gym three days a week, you know, um, that's just one example, but so many things have changed, right? Um, I now have, I'm in a committed relationship, um, I'm in university, you know, I'm at the gym, I'm working my butt off, like, I'm working so hard, and I'm still cooking for my boyfriend, guys, <laughs> um, yeah, so, and, you know, and volunteering and all this other stuff, like, but it's so worth it, guys, it's, it's life-changing to, to, to actually put God first above everything else when he asks you to, but it's so worth it. 
I wouldn't change it for the world. And all I can say is be obedient. Whatever, I'm, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to leave the Holdeman Church. I don't know what God's will is for, for them. But what I do want people to do is I want them to be honest. I want them to study the scripture, be obedient to what God tells them, and really cultivate a personal relationship with God. Uh, listening to him, you know, I liked, I'm on my third round of reading through the Bible. And what I like to do is read, pray, and listen. So I actually have my pen and paper and I actually listen and, and I'm like, God, what do you want to tell me today? What do I need to work on? What do I need to know? And he's so gracious. He's so gracious. And I just wish that for everyone. You know, I, I don't, I don't want people's lives to be turned upside down, especially when they have children and they have families. I understand how hard it is because it's a beautiful community that the Holdemans have. You know, they're wonderful people. They have an amazing, close-knit community. Um, a lot of them are really successful financially because they have good values, morals, whatever. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I miss it. I love it. Um, I loved it and I still love it. But it doesn't compare to obedience and what that brings you in Christ so there's no comparison there for sure so I don't know what God's will is for them but I'm worried that there are people who are being I I consider it a form of idolatry basically what what they're doing what some of them are doing with the with the doctrines the doctrinal book of the Holman Church how it's has such a high such a high um, level of power in in the church because the bible is very clear on what god thinks about idolatry and that he comes first and that the word of god is the living word of god like jesus was the word and you know the bible says the word came down and dwelt among us and the bible is god's word and it's a part of him it's alive and it's all we need you know we don't need other books to be Christians we need the Bible to be Christians and it's just really sad to me that the church that they would believe that the church of God can't include all Christians you have to you know you know believe a certain list of things that they believe in order to be part of God's church right in in their minds and it's really sad to me that they would be so exclusive because when you think of the body of Christ, we don't want an arm separated from the body, right? We want it to be attached because that's how it works efficiently. That's how, that's why unity in God's, in the body of Christ is so important. That's why Christians need to be unified and not focus on all the little things that aren't core to Christianity, but that are sent, um, secondary. For example, the Christian head covering. Guys, I don't even know what I believe about it, but but you know I know that as I continue to learn and and study and read God's word, at some point hopefully I'll know whether it's something that God wants me to do or not. Um, but at the end of the day, what I do know is that that is not a that is not a, a main point of Christianity, right? It's not the it's not what makes or breaks a Christian, right? That's not how you maintain your salvation. So it's just sad that people put those those secondary issues as having the importance of, you know, sending you to hell or heaven. Like, it's just, that's not how it works, guys. You know, the Bible's so clear on what it takes to be a Christian. And it takes believing in Christ, accepting him as your savior and, and taking up your cross and following him denying yourself you know it's not it's not about all these secondary issues that that Christians are using to separate themselves from other Christians it's really sad you know you can't just cut in in real life you can't cut people off from you just because they don't agree with you on something and you shouldn't be able to do that as a church either like churches should be united one thing I love about evolve where I go now here in Edmonton is that every Sunday we pray for another church in Edmonton 
it doesn't matter what denomination it is it doesn't matter you know it's we, we pray for them a lot of times you know our pastor John will actually reach out to a pastor from that church and he actually knows you know kind of what they're going through and and can kind of pray for that and it's just it's a beautiful thing that's what unity should look like and I know a huge thing in the Holderman Church is accountability. They really talk accountability and because, you know, when when somebody does something wrong by the church's standards, they are expelled. So there's discipline, there's accountability, and that's why, you know, there's no alcoholics, there's no drug addicts, there's no you know, people committing fornication and adultery and things like that. Like it's a bare minimum. Like very, very few people are you know drinking or smoking or any of that kind of stuff it's a very very clean culture because they have that discipline in, in place and it's it's effective <laughs> i mean it is um, but you know it's different when you're disciplining someone for something that the bible says is sin versus an issue that you've created a doctrine that you've created based Yes, their doctrines are based on scripture, but don't necessarily have the right meaning, right? There's a lot of scriptures that you, that are hard to understand or, yeah. For example, um, the Bible doesn't condone, doesn't um, say that you can't drink wine, that, that you can't drink alcohol, but, um, but it condemns drunkenness, right? So that's something where I can understand if someone is getting drunk all the time, then I can understand, you know, church discipline. But, you know, or, if, you know, people are sleeping around, whatever, I can understand church discipline. But if it's not something that's in the Bible, you know, if I don't believe that men have to wear beards, <laughs> that wouldn't be a reason to be disciplined, you know, in my mind. So there's so much I have to relearn. I have to relearn modesty. I have to relearn everything. But I don't have to relearn. I don't have to become a Christian again because that, that I always was. So um, I'm just, yeah, I'm so incredibly grateful to God for holding me up through this time. Um, and I know he's going to continue. And I just pray for anybody else going through this reach out like I will be more than happy to offer a listening ear um it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're in the wrong or you're in the right like I don't judge I'm a fallible Christian I make mistakes all the time God knows I don't try to I try not to but we're not perfect so feel free to reach out talk to me if you need somebody to talk to just please reach out like you don't need to do this alone there are so many other people that can come around you and support you. And we're family. You know, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to be there for each other. So, love you. Take care.